All right, hello everybody. Welcome, welcome. Happy morning, afternoon or evening, depending where you are. Obviously evening for the Australian, New Zealand folks out there. Just a quick shout out to a few people here. Shout out to Vicky, hello Vicky, hello uh, Laka, hello Dr. Horton, Shane, Siddharth, a lot of regulars in here, great to see. Maria, how are you? Charlie, Matthew, very good to see everybody. All right, so it's going to be an interesting week, isn't it? It's going to be a very interesting week. We have quite a few bits of key event risks. Hopefully everyone can see the screen. Just let me know if you can. And there's a lot to talk about, but I will say this. I'm not sure if we're going to get another low. And that is because of what we're seeing on the NASDAQ. When we're going through that chart, for anyone that watched my most recent video, I think I put it at the back there, the double bottom potential formation Remember, follow the price action, not what the news tells you. So here we've got this particular Yahoo. I'm going to pick on Yahoo, but you know, these kind of articles, I think they just they completely ruin the way that you think about the market. You know, stock market news live updates. Stock futures rise as vaccine merger news draw focus. Like that's not what's moving. We all know this, yeah. <laughs> like vaccine news, vaccine hype, vaccine not hype. They're not the things that are really moving the market. The fact is the market must move uh, for obviously constant flow and for Wall Street to make money and just in general for the whole system to work. So never really think that these are the real reasons why the market's moving up or down. That's maybe my opinion, maybe a kind of a crazy way to start the start the live stream. But some of these articles recently, I think they've been throwing this vaccine hopes, vaccine fears every single day. Hey, Jemin, how you going? Marlene. Oh, I'm going to say your name. Uh, Ragu, how are you going? William, Ollie, good to see you. Tony, oh, so many people coming in. Hey, Ryan, how are you going? Excellent, excellent. Yes, absolutely. Like, I'm not saying that vaccine long term won't be the thing. I'm just saying that they always write these articles. It's not moving it on the specific day. That's my main point. Now, of course, big news today is TikTok rejected Microsoft's bid and now are doing some deals with Oracle, it looks like. So if you have a look at the shares, you'll notice that Oracle is up pre-market. So it looks like the market likes that. Uh, I think personally that uh, Microsoft might've just dodged a bit of a bullet. They might've done pretty well. We're we'll taking a look at Nvidia. Yes, absolutely, Javed. We'll be taking a look at a whole bunch of shares here. I do believe this is a correction and uptrend long for NASDAQ, Raphael says. Absolutely. Right, look, I mean, the thing is that these are standard corrections in the market. Obviously, a correction nowadays has been a bit of a flash crash, hasn't it? So let's start with doing a bit of analysis on what's really happening in the markets right now. So we'll just uh, have a look at this chart. This is the last week of performance. So this is actually what happened last week in a heat map form. And we saw a bit of a move out, of course, of energy due to concerns about you know, supply demand, obviously the OPEC kind of plus type things going on there. We had a movement down in some healthcare stuff due to the news about the vaccine. And then of course we had the big moves in the FANG stocks. Whenever they move, they are going to move the markets. Now, realistically, these all moved up high. If we go to one month's performance, we're all aware this is gonna be green and most of it is pretty much green now. And if we go to three months performance, it's gonna be insanely green. So still pretty good numbers on a lot of these stocks. Obviously Microsoft's lagging, but that is the nature of their business. So I think straight away, you know, we have to always put these types of flash crashes or corrections or whatever you wanna call them in perspective. The Fed's coming out this week. And for anyone that doesn't know, Wednesday, September 16th, all right? <laughs> we need to have that in our calendars. We need to know Federal Reserve meeting, Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell press conference. Now, is he going to say anything groundbreaking? Very unlikely. However, the market likes to play games with this over this. In fact, generally throughout this whole crisis, the market has bought into the event. So it's generally been buying into the event and then selling the fact. Buy the rumor, sell the fact. That seems to be a lot of the stuff. Now, of course, tonight's or today's session, uh, if you have questions, please ask them. I will get around to as many as possible. Kevin said, made an effort to get here early and thank you uh, for what you've done, Tom. Been bringing all the vids and streams these last few days and my trading has transformed. Cheers. No worries, Kevin. Yeah, look, I think mean, keep it simple, su stupid is the best way of approaching all trading. Yeah, the KISS principle. If we have the KISS principle, 
then you will find your trading gets better. Why is that? Because realistically, if you're constantly drawing lines and drawing a lot of things that you can't repeat, it's all about being re repeatable. Can I repeat what we're doing? If we can repeat it and we're not drawing crazy trend lines, then uh, you're, you're doing well. Horizontal support resistance is a great place to start. I'll say that all the time. Hey, Speeder, you're not late to the party. We're just getting started. So Wednesday, September 16th, obviously is the date. Now, this is the Market Watch US economic calendar. I don't think it gives you enough. So I've always said, if you have the chance, go over to something like Forex Factory. It's a good free resource. And you'll see just more information here. You'll notice that really it's all stacked on the Thursday for me. This is set to Australian Eastern Standard Time. But you can see we've got New Zealand GDP, doesn't really matter. Uh, odd unemployment change or unemployment rate here. Then we've got monetary policy coming out for the Japanese yen. We've got, of course, a whole bunch of great British news. We've got monetary policy statement there and official bank rate and all of that stuff. So there's going to be a lot of volatility Wednesday to Thursday, depending on where you are in the world right now. I think that's going to be the most exciting day. I'm definitely going to live stream it. So we'll be live streaming a bunch of that day. Now, will I live stream the FOMC statement? Uh, time will tell. 4 a.m. is pretty crazy. <laughs> but, but I may do it. I may do it. So yeah. Now, ahead of this Monday, do we expect volatility to come in straight away? I don't really think so. It's going to be another one of those pretty much see the morning the morning's going to open up green and then it's going to be all about the back of the afternoon now if you haven't seen it before the trading that goes on in the last hour of trade specifically the like kind of close of trade is the most important to the market every single time why is this because it shows what the bigger fund managers and the bigger people are actually doing remember they have to fill their positions and through the day they'll fill them and at the end of the day they'll just take whatever price is needed to get the fill done so it really does show you that. I think the start, start of this session will be going through a quick bit of markets. Then we'll be going into, of course, some of the stocks. And I'll go through some currencies as well, probably first, just because I think there's some good currency setups. And I just want to talk about the technicals there because the technicals that you can apply to a currency, you can obviously apply to stocks as well. <laughs> Ollie says, New Zealand GDP doesn't really matter. <laughs> you got that one right. Yeah. Look, GDP numbers, they never really mean that much because they're often well known to the market. So let's just have a quick talk about volume because volume is a really big thing that you want to use mostly in accumulation and talking about whether a crash is real, whether a flash you know, movement in the market is real, what's happening on the volume. So here we've got September the 11th, 10th, 9th, 8th, all of those numbers. They're coming through at 3.7, 4.1, those kind of things. Now put it in Excel just quickly and pull the data here from Yahoo. Remember, I like to use free resources for everybody. And if you have a look at last year, it's not really up on terms of the volume numbers. They're not really that much bigger. This is this year. Then we go back over and we have a look at last year. And you'll see here very, very similar numbers. In fact, there was a massive one here on the 20th. So that was a big one in terms of volume. So volume isn't really spiking as much. Now, if we go through and we have a look at the volume that came in in March, you'll notice the numbers are a lot larger per day. So there's a lot more volume going through the markets back then. And in fact, a lot of stocks like CME and stuff actually aren't doing as well as you'd expect because the volume is down. Yeah, the volume is down. It's not as high as it was, which is uh, very, very strange, really. Usually during market sell-offs, you see an increase and a massive spike in volume overall. Market went up pre-market. What does that mean? So uh, Par's got a good question here. And I think that the market going up pre-market, and we'll go back over to that right now, it doesn't mean that much. It's all about, it just, it just means whether it flows through. So we've seen last week, four days were up in the morning and then by the end of the day, they'd sold off. That is the most important thing. By the end of the day, they'd sold off. CME is crushing me. Yeah, that's unfortunately what can happen. You usually see an increase in volume, but I think Robinhood and some of the other ones have potentially taken away some of that. Uh, question here from Johnny Bravo. At Tom, I mentioned how great you are on the channel to... Uh, people on Bazinga and they told them to collaborate or something. They responded in chat and said to put you in touch with them, passing it along. Oh, no worries, man. I will write them down. I think I've seen them before. They have like three people, I think, on and they, they have like a webcam or something. Yeah? 
yeah, I got no problems dealing, um, helping out some people and talking to other people. I'm sure they're bigger than me. So yeah, for sure. Uh, Aussies love your stuff, man. Thanks, Philip. Yeah, so I think pre-market doesn't mean that much. It's all about what happens at the end of the market. Always remember that it will stand the test of time and it's the nature of funds. It's the nature of how things go. So when we do our analysis, whenever you're coming into the market, you wanna pretty much break your analysis down to around 45 minutes a day. If you can get your analysis and then set your alerts to 45 minutes a day, that is a tick from me because you will find you get severe burnout in the markets over the longer term. Remember, I've done this for a long time, well over 10 years, and I remember doing 18 hour days. So if you can do like really small amount of time and then pack as much in as possible, set your alerts and then just not have to look at the charts, you'll find that you can stay at it and stay consistent for longer because consistency is the key. Here we've got the market pre-market. We can see S&P 500 up, NASDAQ up. It does make sense coming off the lows into the Monday. We've got VIX down, of course, and we've got a bit of movement on crude and a little bit of dollar weakness. So let's start talking about some of the technicals and get stuck into those. Uh, where is my dollar weakness one? I think this one here. When it eventually loads. All right, so dollar US dollar weakness after that strength last week. We've got this trapped, I'll continue saying 93.80, to 94 is the key resistance zone here for dollar. We break that, then dollar strength is well on. Right now we're in accumulation on the dollar. Probably wanna bring this down to the 92 range where the real support is. And we did see the bullish hammer. Now, I always say this, I'll say it again and again and again. Whenever you're looking at a bullish hammer, never just buy it because of the bullish hammer. Wait for the follow through, wait for the market to get a few pips, a few cents higher, and then get involved in that particular thing. Now, if it crushes, below the wick of this point, that is then incredibly bearish. And in fact, as soon as it crushes and closes below there, it's very, very likely to hit the 92. So usually ahead of news, you will see big major currencies, big major stocks all move towards a key resistance or a key support. So we're not gonna see that probably till tomorrow's close, which one that will be. Will it be down here? or will it be up here at the 93.80? But it will most likely move towards a key resistance or support ahead of the FOMC meeting. It always does this. This is the same thing that always happens whenever you've got an, a share coming or a stock coming out with an announcement, they always go to a key resistance or support just before the announcement, and then you see what happens. Let's load up Cisco so I can prove that one. We'll quickly load Cisco up because Cisco was was certainly one that uh, that did that, if I remember rightly. So we had it coming out. Everyone will know this is a resistance point. Previous high, 48 bucks, comes into it with the announcement. Everyone's bullish, bad announcement, bang. Every single time they usually try to hit those resistance supports. So just remember that's normal. And what you wanna do is you wanna be smart, yeah? Don't necessarily take the big kind of height that closes through. Take that retrace back into the resistance, the conservative entry, you get this, yeah, that's the one. That's the one when I see it, mm, it's exciting. Very good TA <laughs> when you take those ones. Got heaps of questions coming in. So thank you very much. I'll have to go through some of these. Hello, everybody. Quite a few regulars coming in. Great to see this Monday stream doing so well all the time. We'll keep doing it as long as people are enjoying it. I invested in inverse ETF. Is that a good idea? Uh, well, inverse ETFs are obviously a time when you think the market's going bearish. Is it a good idea overall? I think that you want to be in the bear, considering it's a bull market with the Fed underpinning it with a put effectively, I think that you need to be quick, fast and sharp with your bear positions. I actually like short spreads. Short option spreads are usually the way I go. Never just you know buy a put. I use uh, bear spreads. Uh, can you tell some things about Slack and Intel later? Yes, we can. They've been pretty favored in the stream, so we'll definitely check those out. Recently, the VIX went higher as the markets topped and then the VIX increased as the markets dropped. Yes, that's correct. The VIX is heading down again. Do you think about correlation? Well, the VIX is generally correlated to market going up, VIX will go down. And when VIX goes up and the market goes up, that's usually a pretty negative kind of thing. 
it's generally been very, very negative in the markets whenever that's happened. So yeah, I think that's pretty much the main thing you wanna get out of that. Let's load up the VIX quickly and talk about the VIX and then we'll get into some indices. So yeah, dollar index still stuck within the range. Gold over here, this is gonna be the dangerous trade this week. Gold is gonna be ferocious each way. I would expect a decent movement. Now I'd expect either we crack these kind of highs, these 1965 highs, or we get below the 1920, 1910 zone. Now most four hour charts are gonna show 1920 being the support, but gold could be the danger trade this week for sure. Let's load up the VIX here on the right hand side instead. So VIX is hitting quite a few key points. For anyone that's been watching the videos, you'll notice that we pretty much saw it hit this kind of 20 zone. We've got a 50 exponential moving average here, and it is also in the area where we had previous resistances. You want to see, for any bear, you need to see it spike here. If it continues down back into the 22 zone, then volatility is back out of the market. Expect higher high, well not higher highs, but definitely movements up, not only in the S&P and the NASDAQ, but we'll also have some very good patterns, which I'll show you very soon on the NASDAQ. There's a very, very good pattern coming on the NASDAQ. Double bottom, go have a look on your charts and we'll talk about it soon. All right, heaps of other questions. Uh, thoughts on energy sector. I think the energy sector will recover to some point, but I don't think it's ever going to be as big as it ever was. So we're not going to see Exxon and stuff become the biggest companies in the world or anything like that. From Sweden? Great. Thank you very much, Jorgen. Hey, MC. How are you going? Almost 20k subs? Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah, we're uh, now remember we are giving away 500 bucks um, for a trader just for being a subscriber. Obviously, if you follow us on the socials, that would be helpful as well. But uh, it's our, our thank you to all of you for obviously supporting the channel. What are your thoughts on penny stocks, Tom? Yes, I'll answer that question. Let's load up this uh, these two charts that everyone wants to see. So we've got S&P 500, of course, coming in a little bit hot, up 1%, 33.72 set to open. And we've got 11,000. 200 so the nasdaq actually weakening a little bit here compared to where it was pre-market now i'll give you my thoughts on penny stocks when you invest in a penny stock it's gone it's gone so you put a thousand bucks in a penny stock and it's worth 10 cents you have to consider that can go to zero every single time that's your risk and it's basically kind of your gamble money you can do very well out of penny stocks but you need to understand that that's how it is now i know a lot of people and this is not a bad idea uh, base it on filings for certain drugs. And I think healthcare is a great thing on penny stocks because you can always go with this hype train into a into kind of an announcement of something being approved. And then when it's approved, you get the hell out. So it runs like this. It goes kind of like this. Nah, 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 nah. It's going like up a little bit. It goes, whoa, and then it's down and dead. And then, then the hype's off and the thing dies. So you basically right now in this current market, you need to be kind of here reading the filing reports, and then when it comes out and it gets the announcement, get out. Every single time that day, just bail. Bail on the open too, usually. <laughs> when you bail on the open, uh, you do better. The open's the hype, the open's the max anticipation, and it's kind of like anything. You know, we, we watch an event with Jerome Powell this week. It's exciting to see the event, and then it's like, wow, that it happens, and you think, wow, that sucks. That's not very good. EuroCAD, yes, we'll talk about that one, Bo. Or Yuko, sorry. <laughs> we will talk about EuroCAD. Now, double bottom here. Does anyone see this one? Does anyone see this? This is a four hour NASDAQ futures. Can everyone see this 11,600? For me, if it gets above here and it closes, this is the end of the bears for now. Why is that? Why is that? There's so many reasons. Now. This is pretty much gonna be a beautiful thing if it happens. The reason why, we get up here. So what are we doing? We're pushing through the 20, we're pushing through the 200 simple, we're pushing through the 50 EMA. They're all gonna act as dynamic supports. You could have other bunch of other moving averages on. It's gonna be pushing through all of them. Then you hit the 11.6. Obviously that's resistance once, resistance twice, support as well. Then if we bust that level, it'll come back down. We've suddenly got our double bottom. So a double bottom has been formed. What do we know about double bottoms? Generally speaking, not only are they going to go for the distance of the move, so ideally we get that distance. Let's bring that up, trend line that up. So we'll take the horizontal distance. 
But then on top of that, they usually are the end of the trend and the start of a new trend. Now, usually in the stock market, they work pretty well. Like double bottoms are great patterns after maybe a sell-off, like in a stock like Intel or a stock that's been beaten down. You get that accumulation, you get that thought process, the bottom has been tested. Usually you would see this in crashes as well. So something like, uh, you know, this crash, if the Fed hadn't have come through and saved the day, usually you would see a double bottom test. You would either see an inverse head and shoulders or some form of accumulation pattern. We didn't see that. We basically just saw a giant V-shape. But if this happens, I'd be setting that 11.6. I really would because when suddenly it gets through all those zones, what happens? Well, it comes back down. Dynamic support suddenly 50, 220. On top of that, previous resistance becomes support. It's a price action kind of heaven kind of trade really. And it, you'd take it most times because that's the way that the market works. You'd always be considering it. Now, there's always element of risk and you've got to make your own decisions, but that's the type of thing that I'm seeing. And this is what you do. You play chess with that market. You always try to make that kind of thing happen. Evening, everybody. Quite a few new people coming in. That's great to see. I remember that happened to Gilead, massive fireworks. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that was super fireworks. We had hype, 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 big bust off. But when it when it's on small penny stocks and they're in for filings, it's even more crazy. So I think this NASDAQ chart really tells the story. We'll probably talk about it a few times into tonight just because this to me is the one that I'm looking at. Now, if you go over to the four hour on the S&P 500, they'll be seeing the similar thing. Yeah, we totally are. We've got a low, we've got an equal low. I would be loading up though the SPX though, the real market for this particular test. And you'll notice the real market actually made a new low, which is a bit strange. But yeah, again, you're getting through a 20, you're getting through a 50, you're getting through that 34, 24. You wanna see that broken, and then all of a sudden we're going back to the new highs, most likely. So I'm still pretty bullish on this. I would like to see a 3200, that would be ideal for me. 3200 would be a great zone for us to go back to. Great zone to go back to that structure formation as well. Let's go to a daily quickly here. Talk about this. So we're at that 50. We talked about on the channel how we need, I would prefer a decent pullback, a bit bigger. If we draw something like a fib on this particular chart, where's my fib? There it is. Fib retracement off the last move. That would also give us at least back onto a 50. So I'd like to see a 3200 into this previous resistance structure, but it's all about that weekly closes. If you go to a weekly chart, you'll see the weekly closes there. Oh, got to get rid of that one. Okay, a bunch of other questions. Bear sentiment 48, bull sentiment 25%. Is there a lot of neutral, Raphael? <laughs> a lot of neutral there. Yeah, bear sentiment, It's it, look, Pretty much you're right though, yeah? Going against the trend, against the grain. You know, Warren Buffett says be fearful and you know he's got that kind of uh, saying. But really the big saying is if you actually get sentiment indicators and people are all doing one certain thing, you usually wanna be doing the opposite of that at certain key points. The key is using technical analysis to find the key points. You don't wanna just randomly do it because you could get very wrong. But when you find those those big technical analysis points, absolutely. Green's the 200, absolutely. And that's a simple, by the way, Shane. I know you're telling somebody else, but yeah, that's what it is. They're moving averages. So green is the simple 200. Either MACD, SMA, or EMA. Yep, uh, these two EMAs and one SMA. When looking at SMAs and EMAs, should you be looking at it from an hourly, daily, weekly, etc. point of view? Yes. So a big thing that I talk about on this channel is not only do we want to keep it simple, but we want to go through the top-down approach. We want to go through and we want to analyze the charts using all the information. Why do you look at a monthly? Because it matters the most, especially in stocks. That's where the big key resistance breaks are, the big key support breaks are and everything. Why did the monthlies close right here for the NASDAQ right on the 20 where previous resistance happened. Why was there like, this makes sense. There was always gonna be some level of support there. It was an overshoot, but it came back down. Now, obviously the Fed came in, but this level here, previous resistance was support. It makes some sense. Have we actually busted a new low from last month's move? No, we haven't done it on the NASDAQ. We know all of this information by looking at this. We also know it's gone crazy. <laughs> but yeah, top down, go to the weekly then, 
we notice it's still pretty far away from the 20 here. We can go back in time and say, well, does it usually revert back to that 20 when it crashes or when it kind of corrects itself? Yes, when it corrects itself, it likes to do that. If I had more data here on this NASDAQ chart, you'll notice it does it all the time though. So yeah, I really, really like going through the charts as much as possible. And that's something I did not do when I first started. I did not do it. I was sitting there on the tick charts, the one minute charts, all that type of stuff. So let's do some currencies here before we get into the stocks. Now, somebody mentioned, I think it was Yuko, said EuroCAD. All right, so let's have a look at EuroCAD. So we've got a EuroCAD four hour here. Now, even if you're into stocks, hear me out on this one <laughs> because it's all about the TA, yeah? This could be a stock. It doesn't matter what it is, really. So what we've got here is we've got a pretty decent zone. So if we go from like a top-down approach, let's go through in one, one month. So one month, this thing looks like crazy, yeah? It's not necessarily always the best trade. We know it's up. We know it's kind of testing these highs. 1.6 break would be very, very, very big for this particular pair. We go down to a weekly. We know it hit the 20. We know it's come off the 20 quite a few times. We also know this candle here was an engulf candle. So last week was an engulfing candle. It was a strong candle and things were looking good in terms of it came back off that 20. So again, we're proving a point there, which is important. We go down to a daily. What are we seeing? Well, again, we've got a close candle at the highest point than we haven't seen all the way through here. So we've got mostly body closes all the way under and wicks under those points. We also know that this point up here, there's a huge amount of wick closes and no bodies. That's important. It means every time these markets have been fighting each other, they've been rejecting and not closing higher. This is the first close higher in that zone. Go down to a four hour and I think things become more clear. I've got like this zone uh, highlighted because for me, this area here is the no-go area but then we've got that 200 simple moving average and notice how the market on the four hour, the four hour chart becomes the most important for me because it's body closed here, it's wicked off the 200, it's wicked off the 200 and now we're going for a potential close above. A close above, flow down effect, what we call lightning bolt move up and then all of a sudden we're back into the highs. So I like the structure formation through this pair. We've got the 2050 cross, and of course, we want to see a close confirmation up above here. But it's the same concept that I'd use in a lot of stocks and a lot of currencies. So you want to bring all that together and bring in the indicators then, bring in everything else as well. Anyway, that's my rant on the EuroCAD a little bit there. <laughs> uh, just quickly on currencies, we've got a few things happening this week. Obviously, Great British Pound news. We do trade currencies, commodities, everything. So this is cool. We're hitting a key level of support here. I think everyone will see it. Previous support, previous resistance over here, previous resistance, previous support, 200 simple. Makes sense for the pound to be a little bit stronger after that uh, you know, pretty big sell-off. Go to a four hour, we hit the 20, we hit that roll reversal. So we'll see what happens now. But then we go over to something like a euro pound and it could present us an opportunity. Obviously euro last week, they will bring out the news that they're cool with where the currency is and they're cool with the monetary policy. So if we get a fall down, what if we fall down to this 91 kind of 40 zone? Previous resistance could act as support. A 20 moving average will also be moving up, which could be hitting at the same time. So these are the kind of things I always think about. It's like the chess in the market. We're here. Do I care about it here? Not at all. Do I care about it here? Yeah. So I set an alert here and I don't come back to it unless that alert happens. All right, we'll get back onto stock. Yo, Gendry, you always want me to look at Bank Nifty. <laughs> I've got to do it for you, hey? <laughs> uh, my anticipations for Powell's speech, same old, same old. Uh, he may look, I don't think they care about where the market's at right now. I really don't. So I feel that, we'll just quickly switch over this Tesla for a second. I really don't think they care where the market's at there. I, their job is to protect the economy. Their job is to protect the economy. So generally, they'd be relatively happy where the market is right now. They'll basically reiterate the same things, reiterate something like we'll use all tools and all that type of stuff. But look, we don't, I just think it's more about how does the market want to interpret it? Does the market want to buy up to a resistance or does it want to test a support before the announcement? If it buys up to a resistance, we need to be ready. If it sells down to a support, we need to be ready. Uh, Ryan, I don't think so to that cash secured puts question.
Yes, uh, we are certainly looking like I'd call Raphael. I'd call it more of a double bottom than a, than a channel. But yeah, absolutely, it's it's certainly bouncing back up there. Could turn to a channel. Am I expecting a rally in the market today? Uh, potentially, yeah. I, I, look, it's it's always hard on a Monday because you don't have direction. I like looking at direction at the close of the markets, ideally. Kevin, quick question for Tom. For example, if you have a sell on New Zealand Swiss and a buy setup on New Zealand CAD, are you going to take both? It's a good question because you don't, Kevin, you don't want to basket trades. So ideally what you want to do is, let's say your risk is per trade, this is trade, this is not necessarily investment. Obviously investment, you might be investing up to five to 10% of your portfolio in a stock. But if you're trading, let's say one to 2%, then you have two choices. If you trade two New Zealand pairs, you could probably do that with two 1%. Now that then still leaves you at 2%. If you're trading three New Zealand pairs though, that's basketing. So you don't wanna do that because if one doesn't work, they probably all won't work. So we need to be remember that your psychology in trading is very important. How can you be a bear, says Chain? Shane, uh, Fed support, stimulus vaccine will arrive, <laughs> election run up, battery day. Tom also promised me a Santa rally. Yes, the Santa rally is real. The Santa rally is a real phenomenon in the market. Definitely check that out. Hi, Tom. Can you look at Tesla and should I position long now before battery day? Hey, there's a lot of hype coming to this battery day. So yeah, look, I think, I think I'd think i be... Tesla is a sentiment-based thing. It's a trade in my... Like, I like it as a trade and, you know, get in, get out based on sentiment. Like, it, sentiment hypes in. So we've seen... Go over previous big announcements. Do some research here. Do the hard yards. So go over some previous announcements. Uh, see how the market reacts to those announcements. Not earnings, but just these kind of battery days and these other technology days that they have. And if it always hypes in, then yeah. I mean, that that's a statistic that works. It is a sentiment-driven trade. We're stuck between a 20 and a 50 right now in the daily for Tesla. You cannot be as fast as high frequency traders. So try to avoid going below daily charts. I disagree. I think you definitely can go four hour charts, but I do agree. You shouldn't be on five minute, one minute anymore. The market is totally different uh, to cooler. Absolutely. People's trading sentiment sometimes reflects their personal situation. If life sucks, you end up bearish. Many YouTubers have preyed on this during the crash with doom and gloom. I did a little bit, Siddharth. <laughs> I did a little bit. I mean, in terms of I, I've made some bearish videos, of course. I try, though, to to talk logically about price action in the videos. Julian says, what's going on with Zip? I actually haven't even looked at Zip. Zip. This is Australian uh, stock. Look, I think that the big thing for Hip, well, firstly, it's in crazy phase. But I think the biggest thing here is people concerned about competition in the in the field. PayPal. Afterpay, you know, is Zip really being able to justify a ten buck fifty? That's a very that's a blow off and a half right here. This is a classic case blow off. Let's go to a weekly and just show everyone the craziness. Look at this big gap up, hyperactivity, big sell off. Now, what do we always know on this channel? You get that big twenty percent sell off in a week, you know that you're in full blow off phase. So, are you going to go and test those highs anytime soon? The answer is no. Very much, you usually do not test those highs in the next couple of days, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much been making the channel since since April, yeah. I think I had a couple of uh, May vids, but yeah, the, the um, pretty much the end of April. Should have done it earlier though. Big mistake not getting on YouTube. You know, the support's been amazing. There's a whole bunch of questions here. I've got to get faster at reading all these. Uh, Tesla's battery day is big deal. Yeah. I mean, I look, it's, it's again, it's sentiment driven for me. I take the, I just, just think what is everyone else thinking? Because it's hard. I mean, how do you price something like even this right now? How do you price some of the stocks in the market right now? Very, very tough, tough, very, very tough. 
Thanks very much for the subscription there, Tiffany. MC, banks also coming after BNPL. Competition will only get bigger. It certainly will. It's an absolutely obvious competition fest. And what's to say like, you know, Amazon. Amazon wants to get into small finance. They could be doing all sorts of things. They'll just do it all themselves. BT, this thing. This thing's a wild, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's moved up quite a lot. I think you were talking about a few weeks ago, actually, Shane. So this stock here supposedly is worthwhile checking out. It's obviously in superior breakout right now. For me, I'd like to see it come back down into the structure of this dollar range. That'll hit the 20 at the same time. With a small stock like this, I still think it's very possible. There might be a little bit of hype still in it. So for anyone that's holding that, it's still very possible it gets back down to the buck. But you don't want to usually buy a dollar. You usually want to buy like a dollar or one, something like that. Whenever you're looking at volume lines, you always notice that there's like huge amounts of orders at a buck. It's like that that impenetrable wall. It's like the Great Wall in Game of Thrones. You don't you don't get through that easily. But uh, yeah, that that'll be where you also don't want to be. You want to be slightly in front of that, or behind it in the Great Wall from the White Walkers. We don't want to be near them. <laughs> All right, Apple's event tomorrow, I'm bullish on Apple. Yeah, it's very, look, fair enough. Apple is great, uh, great company, but it's interesting. Apple used to have a super cool way of trading. It used to always sell it before the hype of the of the announcement and they'd buy it about a week later. It's funny, every single time they announced, the hype died off and it sold off. That won't be this way this time though. So Apple's uh, September event, I believe that does not have the iPhone 5. I think that is a wearable only line. T Raid and Thunderbolt, thanks uh, again for your insight. Question on OAS penny stock: numbers and balance sheet are strong, but uh, but is uh, PE does it look to pop? Like WLL? Well, I don't know this stock. It's going to be a little bit tough for me to tell exactly. Is it this thing? What is this? Tell me if it's this thing. What what, what uh, particular market's on? Oasis Petroleum? Or something else? You have to let me know which one it is. All right, so just another thing that you might want to bring into your analysis. It's not going to work all the time, but I definitely think it's good for pullbacks and just to show over the top. Pivots are worthwhile having on your charts. With stocks, I actually like weekly and monthly pivots. With the markets, I like monthly pivots ideally. Here we've got uh, Apple, we've got the pivots locked in here. Notice how it hits that R3 at the same at the same time, it kind of like stops and finds resistance. It's really good for targeting kind of profit zones. So whenever you go to a month and you hit an R3, you usually know it's tapping out. So here we've got like move up an Apple, hits the R3, it's gonna tap out. Hits the R3 almost at the end of the month, consolidates around that zone, then it moves up to the next R3, consolidates then it moves up to the r1 here and sells off so in uncharted territory which we will soon be in in the stock market it's very very plausible that we'll soon be in it put on the pivots load the pivots chuck them on learn about it a little bit I'll be covering it on the channel a little bit more as well gm what about gm do i like gm <laughs> not really <laughs> What's going on with GM? Is it going crazy? Oh, no. you've disappointed me here. 0.95% <laughs> up. Uh, yeah, look, the stuff with, of course, what was it, Nicola or something? The deal there. It is a pullback, that is for sure, if that's what you're talking about. Back down, previous resistance becoming support and a 20 and two moving average supports behind it. Does make some sense from a technical perspective for sure. Jason says, yes, Apple used to be predictable, but nowadays it's so crazy. Yeah, I agree, Jason. It used to have some amazing kind of seasonals on it, hype trains into events. Once you understand the beast, sometimes it's worthwhile getting good at the beast, hey? You get good at something and then you understand it and you understand the way it trades. Speaking of beasts, let's look at Bitcoin quickly if you're a bit of a crypto fan or even if you're not, check out this resistance here at around this 10.6 level really good structure formation the same thing we talked about last week in the stream i love this kind of thing yeah i love super rejections off a zone 
lots of wicks off a of zone is always good. Shows a lot of accumulation. Again, you'll see this in the stock one day. You print it into your mind and then you go, oh, I saw that last time. Remember the price action. Remember what that's telling us. Then we can look at that level. We've got the 10.6 and if it gets through that zone, then all of a sudden we get that breakdown, come back, test the previous resistance and there's just such a beautiful 11 here at the 11.2. Whoa, Shane, thank you very much. Another coffee fund. Thank you, Shane. I've been drinking them, man. I've been thinking. Like, Shane's given me a couple of donations. I've been drinking the coffee. I'm a bit addicted. There's many traders out there who will be a bit addicted to a bit of the caffeine high. GM killed Hol Holden, uh, Dr. Horton says. Yeah. Yes, it did. Holden is the Australian car company, by the way. So a lot of people in Australia won't, won't like uh, GM very much. Jason, how are you going? I've seen Jason a lot. He's been around the comments. Jason, I've seen you. I think I saw you on, uh, yeah, you were around a few months ago and I think you almost comment on every video. So I appreciate that, Jason. So yeah, I like Bitcoin here and I really, really like the resistance and I like it if it goes through because the resistance makes sense. Let's go down four hour quickly and just proof it because it's always worth proofing your trades. What I mean by proofing, well, you basically get your range. So in here, it's just under the 10. And then you take that range and what you do is you get the trend line out. You obviously draw your, well, you don't draw a terrible line like that. One second. My God, this magnetic thing's, I gotta get that off. And then you, you proof it up and notice what it does. This range predicts into the 200 simple moving average, which is the 11.2. That's cool TA. Whenever you have that, it's great. Very good TA everyone. So 11.2 is hit if it gets through. It makes sense because the structure is predicting the movement and we've got the previous kind of support zones through here, which is just excellent. Now, I didn't realize this all my life. I mean, I wish I did. I wish I could go back 10 years and say, hey, go always proof your trades using price action. Use this, use your patterns, use common sense. You know, what happens when it gets through this zone? I'll say the same thing. Suddenly we've got the 20 and the 50 acting as dynamic support. We're gonna get cross as it gets through. That's the funny thing about this. Often the price action will be just in front of the actual cross itself. This time it won't be, but if it had crossed over here, it would have been. And if that happens, very, very strong. Now, if we bust low the 10K this week due to the Fed or something like that, it'll be a short selling, pretty big short selling. But the idea behind understanding the beast, which is Bitcoin, is when it breaks through, it's gonna usually be very, very fast and very aggressive. So you either have to pend off buys or you have to put a percentage on on the close on a smaller time frame, and then bet on the fact that sentiment will drive it through. Because Bitcoin often does this, it goes bang, bang, bang. Like big moves each way when it gets through key zones. Uh, Siddharth says, Tom, what are your thoughts on staggered entries to mask your lot sizes and secure some fills, if not at all? I do not think that you will be probably a problem in terms of your volume. Now, I've traded some decent volume. Uh, I've traded 15 million Telstra in a day and that kind of thing. When I trade that kind of volume, it went through Telstra easy, okay? Now, if you trade, I once traded too much in Flight Center, it did not go through very well. <laughs> so you need to understand your beast. Uh, but yeah, I don't think I don't think you need to worry too much. You stagger your entries more, I think, from a price action standpoint. So what you can do is when you understand a pattern like this and it closes through, you could potentially then enter resistance levels as it comes through. And as it comes through those zones, uh, then every time it breaks past the new peak, you might enter or you might enter on the pullbacks to the 20 on the smaller time frame or something. I don't think that's a problem. But yeah, I don't think you'll get hit. Latte every day? Yeah, absolutely, Farad. I like all coffee. I drink it all. I don't... I'm actually going... I'm going to go back to drip for a little bit. I'm thinking of doing a bit of drip coffee. A bit of American style. Impact says TA does not work. I would totally disagree with you on that. I think if you bring TA to link along with something like fundamentals as well in stock, you can pick great zones. Remember, what you're trying to do is you're trying to find key levels, mate. And if you find key levels and you understand psychology, you'll do quite well. TA is not easy though. It is not easy. 
and it is you know the worst thing you can do is go out there and do this and say oh you know, i think i think that's a trend line and i think that's a trend line as well i trapped the market because see all these zones hit <laughs> nah that's not it's not going to work out for you it's about understanding the psychology of the market and trying to wrap the ta around that level all right go back up here Nvidia bought the UK's ARM semiconductor company. I think it would be, I think it would add to Nvidia's portfolio heavily. And is this good investment long term? Yeah, I, I think Nvidia is making a ton of great moves. Intel, I'm worried for. I really am. I'm worried for Intel because let's have a look at Nvidia. And I just wish Nvidia was cheaper. Why can't it go back to being twenty dollars like it was a few years ago? <laughs> uh, look, Nvidia has incredibly bullish movement on it in the markets right now. And it's because everyone's incredibly hyped over the new cards. They're obviously hyped at how far ahead NVIDIA are against their competitors and they're doing the right moves. But this stock, we need to put it in perspective here. Check out that monthly, you know, we go back to the monthly. When the bears get in control of this particular stock, it gets brutal. Remember, this is the sell-off in 18 into 19. This is the sell-off of the crisis. So when the bears get control of this market, it can be brutal. So it's one of those things where is it well priced? Well, I know that I know for a fact the insiders are selling hard on this. If you look it up, they are. Maybe it's not justifying its price, but I like what they're doing long term. It's great. And their cards look sick. I'll buy one. So they'll support you if you're a shareholder. <laughs> How do you approach trending, uh, trading and investing from Raphael? Do you trade to make income and increase your portfolio? Yes, that is exactly what you should be doing. You'll find you hit a cap usually where you, you can't kind of handle a, a level past that cap. But yeah, long-term investing is absolutely the, the real massive key to long-term success. You get your money that you make and you invest it to make more money, dividends, whatever else you want to do. Growth stocks right now, absolutely. Uh, Tom, can you look at CODX? I will have a look. I don't know what it is, but CO Diagnostics. It's like, oh, I don't know if this is going to meet my five year five year test. <laughs> this is a wild ride, man. <laughs> um, look, yeah, I, I think that when you try to use TA on, TA on penny stocks, especially this kind of thing, if this is the stock is a bit wild it doesn't have enough structure it doesn't have the right volume the algos the sentiment behind it that kind of thing this will be more you want to understand the fundamentals the filings that kind of stuff you can't use ta well on superior on penny stocks if that's what this is uh do you think the asx 200 is about to tip over it's having great difficulty breaching the 5900 resistance and the sma smas look bad on the daily weekly yeah they all look bad everywhere but we're going to be driven quite a lot by again the u.s market the u.s market rules the world in terms of the western markets and while our market is obviously weaker you can see previous sup is kind of holding here at this low 58s on the futures and we keep bouncing off that level I've still got this level here at 5,600. If that happened, I'd be very, very happy. I think that's a that's a great resistance becomes support kind of zone and we've drawn a fib over it before. But at this stage, it's going to be about the American market. Look, we obviously cracked 6,200. I think our market will move up quite aggressively. The Australian market will easily get to 64 at that point where we've got previous support acting as resistance as well. But for this stage, everything looks bad, but the US market could flick it like that. And that's why I look at the US markets, why I do so much analysis on the US market. I like knowing what it's doing. Uh, do I see US oil going down further? We'll check out oil a little bit later. Jason says Nvidia in the danger zone. It's certainly in the zone where it could blow off at any point, Jason, regardless of what market does. I just realized Impact 3090, he had the name of an Nvidia card. So there you go, he must have been a fan. <laughs> Why doesn't the dang market crash already? It's like an annoying pimple. Yeah, look, you can want crashes, and I understand, it's cool if you've got the money on the sidelines, but you don't want crazy kind of, you don't really want either. You don't want insane parabolic markets, ideally, and you don't want big crashes because while short-term it looks awesome, 
it actually creates incredible instability over the next decade. It's bad. You don't want that. But at this stage, yeah, I mean, I, I would uh, I would welcome a low on this. I, I think there'd be no problem with it for me. I'd be still very optimistic, very, very bullish, especially on the tech sectors. And I, I'm really hoping we get that 10.5 in the NASDAQ. I think that'd be a very nice zone. Why is that? Go to the weekly. Get our weekly 20 sitting right at that 10.5. I'm very, very interested in that level if it does happen. But I think this is this is a level that makes a lot of sense as well for buying. Obviously, if you want to wait, you're waiting for those kind of confirmations like the double bottoms, etc. This is a fully, officially a bull trap season. Yeah, it's certainly usually the time it is. So September into October into usually November, the start is usually weak in the US after the after the uh, news. How do you? Uh, how do you approach long-term investing? A certain percentage input every month. That's a good way of doing it, Caleb. So it's like dollar cost averaging. In fact, I'm going to be doing it on this channel with, uh, as I said, the money that we've made from the, the ad revenue. So we'll be investing it. I'll be just using a bunch of ETFs, talking about it, and we'll do it every single month. Uh, Tamara, it's a good question about the biotech companies. I don't have one that I can suggest right now. There are some good ones out there, though. Oasis Petroleum is OAS. All right, we'll check that out. This is a good idea, Tom. Buy Bitcoin and transfer that Bitcoin to a Forex broker that allows Bitcoin deposits and trade it. I'm much more familiar with FX trading, especially in the platform. Buy Bitcoin and then transfer that Bitcoin to a Forex broker. Why would you need to do that? I'm not sure about that one, Farad. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> I think you want to use regulated brokers. But I do know that US citizens, obviously, it can be very difficult to to uh, you know get into currency and stuff. I know that there's regulations. Hopefully, they change. Hopefully, they change. Could you compare equal weight to standard SP500? Uh, might, might do that if we can. Goal is to grow my Bitcoin. Oh, so you want to convert it back to Bitcoin every time. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I mean, think what you do is you you trade and then you just take it out every week if you want to or take it out every month. You really shouldn't set too crazy goals for yourself. Sometimes it's going to be bonan like bonanza weeks. Would you buy Oracle shares for investment now that they own TikTok? No, I wouldn't. I just don't. But then again, I don't understand TikTok that much. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it. I've been in there, but yeah. They're not going to own it. Yeah, that's right. Dr. Horton says. Hey, Tom. Sammy says, hey, Tom, if we enter a bear market, how do you recommend trading in it? Thanks. Uh, yeah, so I think that if you enter a bear market, again, you would want to be incredibly fast. We all saw what happens when the Fed gets in there. I would be looking at weak, weak stuff or overbought stuff to be trading heavily short. The reason why, so basically anything that's it's super growth stock will get crushed way more. So the aggressive moves will be way better. You wouldn't want to go short value. Like I wouldn't be saying, hey, let's short a bank. Now, I don't think I'd be doing that because the banks, while they might short, they're not going to short as much as like an NVIDIA will. NVIDIA will get crushed because of the nature of the move. Uh, now, you need to be very quick, very fast. Obviously, I think options are a good way of hedging your bets in those kind of options. Thanks very much for the subscriptions there, Maple and Mr. Chris, Cristella? Cristella? Yeah, so so with uh, with all of that, understand that there's different instruments to get you to the job done. Sp spreads are good for bear's side. CFDs are pretty dangerous, I think, because you can get stopped out, really hunted during bear, put, bear moves. Because we need to think about it. If the market's selling off, it goes like this bang and then it goes down again bang and then when you go back over and you look at a monthly it just looks like a big sell-off but the the psychological damage that went on through that bear market is huge and then of course you want to find key levels where you buy and then you pretty much don't look at your portfolio if it keeps going down buy quality don't look at it don't even look don't load that thing don't look i used to <laughs> take some geared etfs i remember those days i lost so much money and i was like oh i can't look i just i literally left it because you cannot touch that damn thing if you have to believe because it'll come back and sometimes it can come back like this big v-shape why don't we all start a mutual fund 
Uh, you'd be surprised how shackled you get in those funds. You've got to sell little portions down because they become too big and all sorts of things. Quite annoying, actually. You have an advantage over funds with less money, actually, because they can't get in. They actually cannot get filled. If Tesla sells 2 million cars in 2022, it will be worth $480 US dollar per share. All right. Is that true, Shane? Where'd you get that number from? I don't trust gold rally at the moment, though. Risky. Gold is going to be big moves. So just quickly go back over the markets here. We've got a 33.78 up 1% on the futures here on the S&P 500. And we've got a 11,200 on the NASDAQ. So remember, we are still low from the 12.457 into the week with the Fed in it. The FOMC statement. Remember, get your forexfactory.com, get your market watch, whatever the hell calendar you want to use. I like forexfactory.com because you can set the timer. And for some reason, this time is completely off. But basically, you can set it to wherever you are in the world. And then, you know, obviously save that. Turn on your daylight savings. I set it correctly then. And uh, yeah, very, very good to have. Some other good resources, obviously, finviz.com. For anyone that isn't using this, you should definitely do it. Let's have a quick look together at last week on the Friday. So this is what happened. And of course, the weekly, this is what happened. So we saw big sell off in the FANG stocks, some of the healthcare plans, oil, gas. I think I bought it up. Oil, gas was actually the least performing. Here's a growth versus value chart. This is from Yardini.com. I think this guy, he puts out some cool charts. I'll give him that. He's got a little chart thing going on over in his website. But basically growth our performance to value. Do we notice something happening here? I'm going to let the chat answer this. All right, chat, please, everybody out there, answer this correctly. <laughs> what is this very symbolic of compared to what happened last time? It only really became, well, this is the furthest it's ever been away. But when was the last time this happened? You guys like Oracle, dear, for the TikTok thing. Microsoft in the buy zone? Probably, Raphael. Yeah. All right. So this pretty much is a massive discrepancy between value and growth. So what we've seen is that last time value was this low, we we're seeing growth this high, it was pretty much the tech bust. Now, of course, we have real companies over here versus fake, but uh, yeah, that is a massive discrepancy. Just shows you how well growth has done over the last couple of years. It's basically hyperbolic though, and value is in the in the mud. Mm, before the GFC, yeah, uh, before the GFC, it was it was interesting because value was doing better than growth. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. When you would like to be investing in tech back then, and then growth never stopped after that. When the Fed got involved, they crippled it. <laughs> market crash of 1929 yeah <laughs> yeah this is this is a pretty big discrepancy these these are uh, reports though are pretty cool yeah some good interesting bits of information i prefer i'll tell you what i prefer reading this like looking at these charts and making sense of it than i would reading like bloomberg or reuters or anything or news agency that's for sure you can get a lot more information here and there's a lot more stuff that you can go through so some of these things are really worthwhile as we said and i put this in the video we have actually a massive sell-off in energy sector negative 10.8 last week information tech negative 7.6 s p 500 overall negative 4.8 so when you look at it there's only three sectors worse than the s p itself and that's because of course infotech is so huge Another interesting little kind of thing here that he puts on the chart uh deep dotted line shows previous year's closing prices so you can see all the previous year's closing prices. Hmm. Not bad. All right, let's get back into some charts. Let's have a look at what's happening pre-market. So obviously the TikTok news, a few people talking about that in the room, the whole Oracle potentially buying TikTok, well, they pretty much will now. I was reading this kind of article here. It's not that it means much, but it's just interesting that you know, everybody's talking about this semiconductors, chip design, software, semiconductors, chip design, software for the long term. So that's, and I, I think I agree with most of this. Chip design, I'm interested in. I, I wonder who's going to be the leader of that over the next decade. 
go over and have a look at some of the market moves pre-market. So let's go up to some of these stocks up when it finally loads. Go over the questions as well in the room. I have to, oh, gold's moving up. Here we go. It's interesting. So US dollar must be kind of tanking, I assume. Dollar index 92.98 down 0.31. So have a quick look over here at my stuff. Yeah, so we're seeing a pretty nice move up on Bitcoin as well, pre-market. Let's have a look at the actual markets themselves. Go down to the smaller time frames here. Let's go to the four hour. I think the four hour provides the best swing charts. So the markets aren't moving that much, but dollar index certainly is. So I'll go over here. Dollar index continues to fall down. Remember, if it gets below 92.71, we're seeing a sell-off on the dollar all the way back down to 92, which will pressure up gold and obviously pressure up Bitcoin ahead of the FOMC. All right, you know, Gendra, we have to look at this bank nifty for your agenda quickly. We'll just spend like 30 seconds to a minute on it if we can. Yeah, Tesla, Tesla's uh, sentiment driven a lot. So you definitely should be looking at that. Let's, uh, so what's this, Bank Nifty? <clears throat> okay, so Bank Nifty is not doing so well, it looks like. Obviously, big breakout here, came back down, hit the 20. Let's go to a weekly here and just have a look what's going on exactly. I think you're coming back into where you would hope to be decent structure. The reason you want to look at a weekly is, well, notice we had the 200 and the 50 all acting as resistance. This level, so you should have like a zone range here. When you're looking at these zone ranges, what you want to do is, whoop, draw, not use magnetic. I keep using magnetic here. But basically somewhere in this zone, we want to see accumulation support. You basically want to see the market stop here. You don't want to buy a falling knife like this right now, but you want to see the market stop here, accumulate a bit, channel, break up high. If it does that, you'll go back and test your highs again. But at this stage, it's it's just basically in the right range for it to find support, but there's nothing much you can do. It's cheaper than it was, but again, this, this zone here, previous resistance, sorry, previous support acts as resistance probably a fib of the whole move. This was a double bottom. If you notice, low, low intervening, that's pretty much the completion of that double bottom. So again, I would expect a lot of support through this particular bank nifty at this point. All right, there's gonna be a whole bunch of questions when I scroll down through all of this. So let's go through those. Soon as market opens, gold and BTC reversal. Yeah, it's been like that, hasn't it? Well, the market's only 27 minutes away, everybody. We'll look at Intel for sure. Uh, Samuel, have we seen BRN brain chip? Yes, I have. Seems a lot of hype. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's awesome. If you find out about the hype stocks right now and you get involved in the hype stocks, then you can certainly make a lot, but you need to understand what they are, hype stocks. When they hype, they go crazy. Uh, where do you access simple day moving charts? So where you can access simple charts like this, tradingview.com, very good resource for you to check out. A few people coming in here saying, what about Alibaba? Yeah, we'll check out Baba. Let's have a look at what's going on pre-market. So obviously this has some news here, buying the Grab, 3 billion bucks invested in Grab supposedly. Not a Terrible move, probably. I still want this thing down here again, back to where we actually talked about the breakout. I'd like to see it go back into the structure and test the previous resistance as support. So the weekly probably won't do it. Otherwise, it's just going to come back. Hopefully, it hits this 50, 261, 50. Previous resistance, support. I, I don't particularly like this pricing here for this company. But yeah, this is a good zone where it is right now. I think there's better out there though. And that's of course up to you what you want to do. Biggest type stock of 2020 Tesla. Could be. I think Hertz was pretty hype though for that one day on Kodak. <laughs> this was crazy. Neo, Nikola, they're all pretty hype as well. Pretty much anything in electric car vehicles. 
they've been the ones that are that are trading really really hard so neo of course we've got here came off that previous point we actually talked about this in the channel like last week when it was hitting here it was hitting here live if i remember rightly so we've got the the test of the previous resistances becoming support bounce very heavily off that so a lot of bullish sentiment in this particular stock so this one bullish for now obviously that is a key level still for it where it is right now well what can you do you have to go into the smaller time frames to find any opportunity other than just blindly buying it or selling it so i don't particularly like the structuring on that doesn't give me any kind of high statistics that i like when you look at nicola obviously this is a classic case of buy the hype and get the hell out so this market opened up super hot I think it opened about here actually. First hour of trade became buy through. That's the sentiment of everyone getting involved in the hype train, similar to what happened last time. Over here though, you would have probably got shot yourself getting out early, but overall, you know, you can't know it's always going to do that. This was one day hype and it sold off. This is pretty much like a penny stock trades. This is like your SEC filing. You get the filing going on, get the sweet announcement, get the hell out of that thing, and then that happens. <laughs> Yeah. Ten year yield looks like it will trade flat to red today after the first hour. Yeah, the bonds have been kind of doing their thing. Ah, uh, here we go. Tom, from a TA perspective, what's your take on gap openings and filings? Well, I think I kind of answered that a little bit. When I look at the SPY, it looks like, uh, looks as though there are still a few below where we are now. Thanks in advance. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by the, the below. If you mean they're below the gaps or what you mean by that one there. Um, Oh, I hope I, I cannot pronounce your name probably. <laughs> I'm not even going to try that one. But uh, yeah, that like in terms of filings, I don't mind filings. I just think that you you want to look before, run run the kind of understand the instrument, understand what it is, and then trade accordingly. Is it an investment? Is it a trade? They're different things. AMD is showing a lot of promise. Absolutely. And they're in the technology and they're in the laptops now. Intel literally are scared of them. <laughs> Intel, I'd never seen Intel in their events ever talk about AMD and then they suddenly did. Now, Intel's back in its accumulation area. Notice here on the structuring of the four hour, well, firstly, we had after the big sell-off, we had a very, very nice kind of accumulation break high. Then we got back down here due to the nature of the sell-off. I would find it very difficult for it to get under this zone. This 47, very, very tough to get under here. If it gets under this zone, it instantly will fill to 44 though previous kind of support we look at the daily you'll see that this was the support this was the support if it does get low here this is the support that's like a super bearish looking flag right now except it's that super high point but i think overall it's just an accumulation i could not buy it here uh, for a stock like this they can sit there way too long so we could do it could do this and then you come back like literally six months time and it's still chilling in that zone the thing is, the longer it chills in the zone, when it does break out, that's when you want to get involved in that trade. Usually it'll be some announcement, but that's when you want to get it. Right now, Intel is, you could add it to your portfolio, but overall, it's not giving you a sign that's going to move anytime soon. When you get a big crack like this and it moves down 20% in a day, they don't recover quick. They take a very, very long time. Look at a lot of oil stocks that got cracked 20% a few years ago, and you'll see how long they can take. Take a look at AMD. Uh, here we go, Tom. I think I've heard you say in previous sessions you prefer swing trading. Is that on stocks or FX? I prefer swing when I'm trading and I prefer obviously investing when I'm investing. So I don't really love scalping. I think scalping is cool, but it's just super time intensive. Intraday trading is cool, but again, you've been around long enough and you've looked at it for long enough, then, then, it, then it's... Uh, it can definitely uh, <laughs> drain on you. You can put a lot of time in and just, it's just draining, yeah? When you've been around 10 years, you won't find many people still doing it because they just can't, it's just too much. It's too much time. It, it destroys your life because you're always looking at the charts because you have to be. Scalping and intraday trading are very intensive. 
So I love swing trading. If you're working out there, look at swing trading and look at dailies and four hours and weeklies. It's a great trade. You can do 45 minutes a day, literally all of that. This AMD chart worries me if it closes through. 2050 cross short, full on SUP here. We're up 0.34%, 76.60. When we do a top down on this one, let's look at AMD. That is some hype train. Now, how has AMD hype trained in the past? Hype train, sell off. Blow off kind of thing. Hype train, sell off. This is actually what I always remember in the past past. Obviously, they were tech busts and stuff. Hype train, sell off after the hype train. So this is how it used to trade. We can't look at those. What we can do though, is when they get into the cycle, they've often bought up and then sold off rather aggressively. Now notice the NASDAQ has not made a new monthly low. We've now got a monthly low that has formed on AMD. It did a super move up. So I would expect a bit of a blow off here actually. I think AMD is looking weak on the share right now. We go down to the weekly. We're still quite far away from the 20 moving average. Obviously there's huge structure through the 60 zone. That's going to be amazing if it ever gets there. We've got a pretty weak looking candles, but it needs to hold this level for the bulls. Obviously, if you want to buy dips in the future, you'd be fine, but it needs to hold this level. I think a lot of people agree with this too. This 76, if it can't hold here, closes under, there's not much here. But this 60, ooh. I just, I might even set an alert for that. <laughs> that is a sick zone. Multiple resistances, obviously strong break. If it ever happens, I'll look at the news, but obviously it could be very, very interesting. Thanks very much for the subscriptions, everybody. Coming in, cover everything trading here. Obviously talk about trades, talk about TA, talk about a bit of fundamentals as well. I don't really don't get analysts opinion on Intel. They keep bashing it for two decades, but Intel's profit slash revenue only went up every year. I know it is a boring and old company. It's because of market share and growth in general. You can make a lot more money, but you need to show growth potential. That's a huge part of it. Like right now, you look at Amazon, they're just like, hey, we've got half the world shopping on our website. Why not get the rest of them? And people believe it. People believe they can do that. AMD went through like four or five bad CEOs before finally uh, settling with Lisa Su, who has been great for the company, Gemin says. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And they got some cool products. I mean, I've got an AMD CPU in this, uh, this computer right here. It's a new one. I support the company. I like AMD. I've, I've often owned AMDs through the year, through the years. But uh, Intel, just they're just expensive and they don't have the lead right now. Would love a buy at 60, Rockman. Well, here's a question, Rockman. So right now, you're like, yes, I want 60. Will you have the confidence when it gets back to that level to actually buy it? The, the question is, you've always got to be prepared and have your plan in place. Like right now, where you you hit the 50. You know, we've hit the 50 on the NASDAQ. We hit the 50 on the S&P. Were those on the dailies? Were those levels that you were going to buy at two weeks ago? Ask yourself that question. Were you going to buy earlier and you didn't and you held off? Unfortunately, if you always are holding off or you don't follow the plan, it's one of those kind of things where you just end up sitting there and then you're watching my video in one month's time, you know, going, damn, like, you know, I wish I was in or you're watching somebody else's video about will the market crash again or something like that because the thing is you want to be in. And uh, you've just got to be prepared. If you're being prepared as you enter a third of your position at these zones and buy it down, at least you've got some in. It's like what I say to people, if you can't go broke taking profit either. So say you have a stock that's going parabolic. If you take off a third here and hold two thirds, and then it goes up another 200%, you're not going to be that sad that you took off the third. You might go, oh, damn, I wish I didn't. But when it comes back down, you'll be like, oh, thank goodness I took off some. And you can portion out of it. That's something you can do. NASDAQ S&P retest Friday's lows today. It doesn't look likely right now. How will the market act into the announcement of obviously the FOMC this week? We've generally seen bullish positive action into the FOMC. But we do not want to see this market, if you're if you're a, uh, a bear, you do not want to see it above this 11.6 on the NASDAQ. Double bottom at that point and pretty long. I expect it to either be testing the lows ahead or have cracked the lows down to the 10.5 support ahead of the FOMC this week 
or will be right at this resistance. I very much don't expect it to be here at all. Like I really would, I, I don't even think it would be holding this up. That doesn't seem like a big enough move in the next couple of days. So I'd be wanting to see it either at the 10.5 or the resistance. How long uh, a week do you structure your swing trades? No less than a week, two weeks. I'll do whatever it takes. If the if the trade's there for three, four, five weeks, I'll I'll leave it in. Look at the time frame. Usually, you'll have an idea. If you draw like a a pattern as well, I explained this a few weeks ago. If you've got like a channel, and then that channel, you basically have this channel every single time it goes down. It takes, I don't know, seven candles, and that's seven days. Every time it goes up, it takes 10, then it takes seven, then it takes seven, then it takes seven. And then you say, okay, over all of these times it goes up and down, on average, it takes eight days. When it breaks through, it shouldn't take any more than at least two times that. So if you go two times eight, to get to the next zone, which is the distance of that channel, it shouldn't take any more than 16. Why is that? Well, usually, the pattern should be strong enough, the coil should be strong enough that the market blasts through at some point. So it's actually good for timing your options. When you see a channel, you see a pattern, you can put a timer on it based on common sense. That's what I've done a lot. I've always thought common sense is a great approach to thinking about technical analysis, thinking about the markets. Is Intel behind on chip or something? Uh, when it released, what happened to AMD? Yeah, they're behind, Shane. Well. They certainly aren't making out. And they also have the worst marketing department on earth. Day trading is like fighting MMA. Swing trader played tennis and investors are on the beach, <laughs> says Logan. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Yeah, day trading is like fighting MMA. <laughs> Actually, I would say scalping is like getting but, like punched in the head constantly. <laughs> That's what, that's what scalping's like. Getting punched in the head constantly. Having a bit of a hernia. Especially when the uh, volatility gets up or the news comes out and you've got things in the wrong positions. You're like, oh, please, don't go there. Please. I'm sure a lot of people have felt that. 10,500 sounds good. So S&P equivalent 3250. Yeah, 3200, 3250. There's good structure through those zones. We look at the S&P 500, you look at the weekly. I was like looking at weekly closes. Look at that 3,200. Previous closes. We had the we had the 20, but of course the 20 is catching up now. But the 20 simple is probably sitting around there. This is the e exponential. But I like that 3,200. Just above that area makes a lot of sense. If it, if it does want to keep going down, if it doesn't stop right here. This is critical point. Yeah, Intel could be behind one or two years. Now, in the past, they've always come through with the goods. I remember there was like this hideous Celeron many years ago. It was, oh, so bad. The The first dual core Intels was so bad. That was back in like 2003. <laughs> but that's when AMD spiked. If you saw that chart, they spiked. And then Intel came back. Oracle lost the bid for TikTok? Did they rev? I thought they won the bid for TikTok. And Microsoft lost the bid. Someone can confirm in the chat, I'm sure. So we've got here 12 minutes until open. So let's have a look at some of the stocks. Let's look at some of the, the more popular ones. AMD is now down pre-market. I am a bit worried about that chart just because of the hype onto it. And obviously what we're seeing, that support. We've got Tesla still 1.83%. I expect Tesla to remain relatively strong sentiment-wise. We've got that battery day coming up. Obviously a lot of people are super hyped about that. So it could be, could be a fizzer, but overall, Tesla may hold more. I'm going to look at things like Apple as well to, to gauge a lot of sentiment. This is a very strong sentiment indicator along with being a giant stock in the index. So at this point, we are stuck between the 20 exponential and the 50. We obviously tested that 50 on Friday. We are now pre-market at 114, up two. This is a very, very key zone. We get above the 120. It's going to be showing a very similar pattern to the double bottoms on all the other time frames. Remember, S&P looks very similar to this. So does the NASDAQ. So treat this 120, a break of that, all of a sudden we're signaling back into the 135s. We've got this double bottom effectively coming through. We get low, then we're symbolizing 
as uh, many people are finding out out there, really the 100 bucks flat. Previous resistance structure could become support. These are the gap fills. These are the zones that you want to recognize. You don't just buy here and go, oh, that's a, that's a great level, this 104 or something. It's the structure points that TA helps you with. Analysis of your favorite company, Blizzard Activision. I love Blizzard Activision. I hope their shares go up to 300 bucks. Is that biased? <laughs> uh, yeah, look, I like the company. I hate the CEO. Oh, I hate that guy. Um, so yeah, Blizzard right now is looking a bit weak. Let's have a look at the weekly into monthly. We have, of course, the BlizzCon got a small stop this year, which is a pretty key event for this particular stock. Often trades hype into it. Seeing it test the 20 previous resistance was literally formed or spiked off and it closed under it. And from this point of view, do I like buying it here? Mm, not really. I mean, I liked I liked a lot this accumulation. I really love that retest over here. That was a beautiful thing that happened in March. But particularly these ones were all great. Breakout here, breakout here, retest. Always gives you that retest, this stock, which I like. And this is already done a retest. So still good buying here. Overall, it needs to make more money. I think it's got great games in the pipe. But that's more fundamentals. From a TA perspective, it just basically looks like it's a standard pullback into the 20 on the weekly. Uh, Shane says, Tom, I will take $100 Apple from you now. Yeah. Well, if you worked at Apple, you would get the Apple discount. And what you don't guys don't know is that Apple give you a sweet discount if you work there. You get like crazy discount on shares. You can't take much though, but it's not bad. Yeah, Oracle won, both lost. <laughs> Beyond says uh, both lost. They probably did. I don't know, is Oracle relevant in terms of this kind of thing? Is this a good technology for Oracle? Can anyone tell me? Chemin says seller on yuck. Yeah, that's right, they were bad. Excited for Diablo 4, Windfall says. A lot of people won't know what that is. Uh, yeah, I, I like uh, that. That's like my favorite game franchise ever. So, yep. Half, probably four quarters of the reason I own this. <laughs> that being said, they'll probably stuff it up. Tom, gold seems uh, to have early December plus minus two weeks bearish retracement. Does the Santa season have a precursor of bullish? Uh, so, Speed Art's pretty crazy question. I would suggest you actually look up gold seasonals, it's a thing. So definitely check out gold seasonals. In terms of gold though, it is being driven based on Fed, based on inflation targeting, those kind of things. Eight minutes till open here. So we've got to keep going and uh, look through some of these stocks. So another one we want to look at, let's have a look at how Nvidia is trading now pre-market. So we're up seven, wow, 7.48%. The market loves this stock right now. This stock is on fire. Whew. That is some firecracker move pre-market. 5.23, well done to long buyers of NVIDIA. And to think, only a few years ago, you get this thing for about 20 bucks. 15, 20 bucks. Damn. <laughs> it also is a candidate for a split at some point as well. Who knows, they may do it. Probably won't. Not at 500 in America, usually it's a few thousand. Check out Amazon coming in. I saw Amazon were hiring even more staff members, 1.81% up. This has still not made a new monthly low on Amazon. Obviously big moves here. This was amazing ascending triangle for anyone that's been looking at the technicals on the monthly. You can obviously see this key resistance breakout. It's very, very, very like super bullish right now. It's done it before though. I don't know, these are big candles, aren't they? Go down to a weekly. That's a bearish looking weekly close there on Amazon. I still want to see it back down this 20. We talked about that. Talked about this 2.9 level, 3K level. I would like still to see it down there. I couldn't buy it here. I could leave it and hold it, but I couldn't buy it here. Uh, yeah, Oracle's up 7% pre-market. Yep. The, the, the market likes it. Maybe they think it's getting back in. Oracle owner earns, Oracle director or CEO or whatever, he earns some good money, that, that guy. Big money. 
Uh, Shane says, big green futures, retail opening the market. Let's see what institutions do in the Arvo. Absolutely, absolutely. If you're long and you're wanting to know what's what the sentiment this week's gonna be, it's gonna be more about the close coming in. Adobe, that's a good good point. Coming in with strong analyst updates and then obviously all upgrades. I would say one thing. Let's think of it as logically. Well, obviously it's gone crazy. What happened with Zoom? So Zoom went absolutely nuts off earnings and off the off the reports. With Adobe, are people getting more into YouTube? Are people getting more into buying these kind of things? I mean, I think there'd be a lot of people just buying subscriptions and learning new tools. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's even upgrades there. But overall, yeah, I think the commerce, e-commerce trend and everything else that they're doing, they're, they're a pretty good company and they've made able to really financially make this very viable. I'd love to see a 440 on this one. Back into the 20, back into the structure zone over here. Whenever you got like good structure like this, the good thing about key structure in the market is not only do you have the first floor being this level right now, but then you have the second floor. When you've got structure like this, you've effectively got two buy dip points where the market will find hopefully support through. When you have something like this and it just goes crazy, then what 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 have you got? You got nothing. That's why the blow off can really affect it and really come through. You want to see that standardized market trend. And then that allows you to TA trade very easily. Something that does this and vertical, it doesn't allow you to TA trade easily. Uh, let's have a look at Microsoft as well. I want to check that Microsoft. Four minutes until open, everyone. We'll go back over to the S&P 500 and NASDAQ in just a minute. Have a look at those. Talk about that double bottom again that could be forming here. Microsoft's still looking relatively weak into the 20. We're up 0 0.08. So that is the least interesting right now. Quickly click on Apple. Is there a good substitute for Robinhood to gauge retail faves? I pretty much go to any of those websites. Um, yeah, the Robinhood track got, got destroyed, absolutely. You go to a lot of websites out there and just look at the most popular search stocks. Hey, WebCidix, thank you very much for joining. I've seen your comments recently. I gave them some, uh, some love, don't worry. Nvidia to buy TikTok. Wait, Nvidia to buy TikTok now. Is that true? Just partnership. I'm only have to use free free tools here. <laughs> yeah, Nvidia is buying ARM. All right, cool. No worries. Scared me there. <laughs> Are you, it, look, that's definitely a big danger on the markets uh, in terms of hype. Following hype stocks, know what you're following. If I made a video every day about hype stocks, they might go up thirty percent. But the problem is, is that they can have very severe consequences. So yeah, do definitely be careful there. All right, so we're looking at 11.243. So we're up another 40 points ahead of market open. Two minutes to go here, everyone. Market over here, US 500, S&P 500 over here. Let's go down to the four hour. Actually, we'll go to maybe one hour charts. Now, just quickly, I want to reiterate on the two indices we've got right here. We have decent strong formations through the 34.20 if we break a high of that, we're going to break through some key resistance. And basically on the S uh, on the NASDAQ, we've got a very similar 11.6 high. These are double bottom style patterns. If we break these levels, we're symbolizing bull trend back intact and the correction could be like literally officially over. So these levels are very key this week. I expect us to break either the low or the high this week. I don't expect us to stick around for long based on the market. The volume is weird too. These these crash volumes or these correction volumes have not been as high as you'd expect. One minute till the open, everyone. Excited for a Monday? I know I am. I'm excited for this week. FOMC, it's always fun. Are oh, you joking with me? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 
What will they do with TikTok? I have no idea. Why would anyone use TikTok, says Logan? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a lot of, I think it's a bit of fun. But I always, it kind of reminds me of that draw something years ago. I know it's completely different tech, but yeah, that draw something, that was all the craze and then it's kind of died off. Instagram did a great job staying relevant for so long and building their share. So yeah, I just look, I don't, I don't get TikTok too much. I find it a good time waster is probably the big thing. All right, so here we go. We've got the open coming in. Obviously, where I kind of missed it there a little bit, but <laughs> pretty much opening flat on. First 15 minutes to half an hour being very interesting. Let's see if we can get, we'll definitely scream for the next half an hour and we'll see what happens in this market. Seeing the bullish movement come in. Why do we check that? Well, the first one hour has traditionally been very strong on the retail side, followed by a Wall Street flow through that's been weak after that first hour. Oh, sand dollar 77, US $5. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you for your support and assistance, Frankie G. Thank you. Thank you very much, Frankie. Appreciate that. No problems. I really enjoy making these live streams. I streamed like 10 years ago, but not much. And uh, I really enjoy sharing a lot of the knowledge that you guys have got out there and, and just sharing everything I kind of know with you. It's worthwhile doing it. Helps people and... Obviously, I think it always helps your own game as well. I hope to make these streams a little bit better. I want to bring on a whole bunch of volume charts, bring on some other free stuff that, that'll help everybody. I was actually just talking to a student today. He sent me this and it's funny. Is I was just talking about uh, check sheets or cheat sheets for trading. And I, he won't know I'm showing you, but basically this is just like a little thing that he does every time. And I said to him, I said, oh, laminate it, man. And the reason why is I used to laminate this sheet and I'd put it on my, my table, I'd tick it with a, with a big biro to make sure I never made mistakes, hey? I always used to say, okay, I did this step, I did this step, I did this step for my trades. So I definitely want to create a few of those things. <laughs> Dr. Horton says that's like 20 bucks Aussie. No, man, the Australian dollar, we're back at 70 plus. Our currency is real. Americans don't know what's up. We could go back to being flat. I remember when we were $1.05, $1.10 to the US. Jerome's making it cheaper for us to buy Tesla shares. Nikola straight into the red. Well, let's look at some of the stocks. Oh, Nikola kind of makes me smile. It's just crazy. <laughs> it's a crazy stock because it's worth a lot as well. Dollar index still kind of shorting off here. VIX is lower. We do not want it under this 26, the bears. We do not want it under here. Come on, VIX, get back up. Let's get some volatility going on. Expect obviously a spike in this into Jerome. And that'd be interesting. I mean, I wonder what the spreads are going into the, into the FOMC for the VIX. Thanks very much for subscribing there, Chris. Let's have a look at some of the stocks coming in. Let's look at Nikola, have a look what's going on there. Let's look at Tesla, then we'll look at Apple, obviously check them out, see if there's inter anything interesting. So Tesla actually opened a little bit weaker than it was in pre-market. Pre-market was around 380 plus, or around three, I think it was 380 plus, 2% plus up, now 1.42, and we have a Nikola that is 3.33 down. It moves such a high percentage, like a crypto, how, how this thing moves. But uh, yeah, this was the hype, followed by the not so hype. I really feel bad for people that get into this one. But you have to take this as a lesson. This is a lesson in like when the hype's on, don't just buy into it. And if you do buy into it, you have to have a plan because it can get dangerous out there. Do BTC? Yeah, like I love uh, the BTC right now. I really, really like the, the formation on it. Actually, let's load up. Oop, I don't want that one. Let's load up this 10.6. Oh, yes, that's good for me. Thank you very much, BTC. Yeah, that's a nice move. So obviously we want to see it close above here. Now, a few people mentioned before that BTC often breaks out into the market of the US. So if it does and then it like it fakes out, we don't want that. So what we really want to do is we want to make sure that we're getting proper confirmation. So we can either do that by checking the different time frames. Let's have a look at the one hour. Do we have one hour closes above this zone? Well, we do over here on the left. 
And that that's what kind of concerns me a little bit. So we wanna see a one hour close at an all high. Ideally, it would be the four hour chart that would close an all high. Let's have a look at a two hour chart as well. Two hour charts closed here. So we're gonna see an all high probably get something like this 10.7 and then we short off. So ideally we have up here, come back down and then we see a little lightning bolt in 15 minutes, get back into that 11.2. That'd be the perfect TA trade. That's the kind of thing that you want. But right now, we haven't seen the confirmation close. We are only 11.35 my time. So we've still got 25 minutes of trade for this particular one. But I love the structure. And more importantly, I just, I always say it, I love that accumulation with the wicks off here. It's always nice to see buying every day, pushing it up. That shows that there's a commitment of buyers around that 10K psychological. It makes so much sense. Now we're only 0.27 up. All right, let's get back over those markets. What's going on here? US 500 now up 0.93. It's not as exciting. What happened to my 7% market breaker, circuit breaker kind of days? Now they were exciting. <laughs> I wish I was streaming for that. Though I must admit, I was, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, every day it was so bad. <laughs> There's so much money red everywhere. But um, yeah, obviously that was the opportunity. But 7%, I wish I was streaming it. For anyone that was out there watching streams and stuff, must have been a lot of fun. I was too busy trying to place, but uh, yeah, it was very good. NVIDIA, yeah, let's check that one out actually. That was crazy pre-hype, wasn't it? Oh, I, I like this Bitcoin this week. I just wish that the stupid Fed would bugger off right now so that they didn't uh, potentially ruin some of our trades. The Fed has been ruining some TA recently. So still 7% up, so still very strong. Testing that resistance, hmm. Damn, that's a strong trade in terms of how bullish this is looking. NVIDIA is bullish. Now, I don't think there's anything for me here or for anyone, but it's it's good. If you're in it, you should be happy with the sentiment, the bullish sentiment. Let's load up that Apple again. I keep looking at the same stocks because I'm looking at these ones. Not only are they popular right now, but they show me a lot about sentiment of the market. So Apple's actually trading slightly down on the open now. Only seven minutes in, we've had a decent little swing here. Let's go to gold. Gold should be up. Kyle said those days were crazy, it was incredible. <laughs> yeah, they certainly were. Like I, I had all my feeds open, but I was very like very much focused on, on the market itself at that point. But I, I should have done some live streams. We just didn't have the channel back then. I missed the 7% up day in the middle of the month for SPY. Yep, that was a good day as well. It's a good day when you're long. Fed should buy TikTok. They probably are web. Then Jerome can dance his way to the bank. <laughs> Imagine if the Fed got in TikTok. Oh my God. The Fed. The Fed. <laughs> I don't know about the those people. I don't think they've got that much sense of humor. They'd be so dry. 1956 so we want to see a 1963 break close that opens up 1990 into 2000 pretty much immediately obviously with this particular thing with gold we're going to see a break up go down just remember we're in a monday though with commodities with currencies monday is historically the fake out day it's the crappy day the worst day usually to trade it's a good day to obviously get started for the week but the Tuesday, the Wednesday, and the Thursday remain the best trading days of the week in most pairs, in most stocks, in most at least everything. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If I was to pick three days of the week that I can be bothered trading, it would be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> what happened to Oracle? Oh, no. What do you mean? What do you mean it's down a little bit more now? Look at these bloody red candle what happened. It's, tr it's crazy that one. 4.39, so it was up about seven or eight into the open, wasn't it? Look at Nikola, do I dare? Go back over to Nikola. Oh, it's bad, God, I hate this stock. Oh, so we're back on SUP. Come on, GM bought some. It's good. Go up. 
yeah, this stock, uh, look where it came from. This 11 bucks into 93. <laughs> yeah, this is a classic case. It just reminds me of a penny stock, the way it trades. So we want to find superior bulls here. Please buy, is what we're saying if we're long on this one. They lied. Now, I've read that a few times actually over the weekend. It says that there's a lot of inconsistencies in their data, yeah? I'll give you one inconsistency. What caused that? Nicola hired Bock to do the truck. Bosch, 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 sorry, Bock. <laughs> Bosch. Con job, GM got conned. True, Ruben. Well, unfortunately, a few people probably got conned in this one, yeah. Yep, well, it still goes with my rule. If it's under a few years in, in trading on the markets or if it goes ballistic like this, you want to get out. I feel real bad for people in this one though. It's just, it's it's a shame, but it's a lesson that everyone gets taught at some point in their trading or investing career. So now we're back up in the markets here. It looks like everything's kind of reversed. That little initial blip up 1.8 now, 11.270. So we've got a pretty big move here in 10 minutes, really. It's about, what, almost a percent of move in the indices. The truck they showed didn't drive. Is that Kodak? Oh, it's Nikola. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, it's not something I ever looked at other than just doing some analysis on it. But we, the blow off top was really the big warning. It was, it was done after that. Nikola is the next Thanos, could be. European markets flat, US markets up. Uh, it's probably because of the stocks that are moving right now. Probably seeing a bit of tech stock movement and that's it. Let's go over to our Finviz for a second. This wouldn't have uploaded yet, will it? No. Check that out very soon. Let's have a look at the currencies just running around here. Obviously saw some more moves in dollar. Had that good movement in Bitcoin. Yep, so Euro continues to fall against the pound, which is good. Want to see it back down in here like we talked about at the start. Planet Musk, Tesla will be a trillion dollar company. Says Planet Musk. Well, I like your name, Planet Musk. I think you you have it. <laughs> you believe. You believe. Now I'm not sure if you're calling me Tom Dog there or Doe. But uh yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, look, I think with Tesla, obviously, it's it's very difficult to know exactly what's going to go on. You could be very bullish on it. You could believe they're 10 years ahead, all sorts of things. I mean, I've been proven very wrong by Tesla with the crack, how easily it cracked um, the last high, that height that kind of came into this 350. I thought here we would probably blow off back into the 200, which would have been the 1,000 back then. That would have been my preference for it to go back down there and then to more bullish height. But obviously this last bit was very, very aggressive. Which is great, but I, I always treat it as a, t as a trading stock myself, but it's been very, very good for investments. It's five times. Obviously, I think NVIDIA for me was the kind of more cool kind of position. I guess I understand it better. A lot of head managers bought the tech dip last week, by the way. Yeah, they certainly would have, yeah. A lot of them are saying that as well. I know it's Goldman, a few others would all be, of course, going through and purchasing a whole bunch of stocks. So, because they, they were all talking about it. But then often what they tell the public, they would have already either done it and then they say, oh, we think the bottom's in. So they're like, oh, we bought it all and now the bottom's in. <laughs> yeah, that's more of a hype. They're kind of manipulating the markets themselves there. So we're seeing these moves up. Obviously, if we get the S&P and we have a big, big move for it today, 3420 resistance now if we break that ahead of the fomc god that's bullish i still maintain these double bottoms these 11.6 and this this the kind of 34.20 zone into the 34.50 these are very key resistances will amazon split before xmas says if the look technically a split shouldn't do anything for shares anymore i know they both moved up but it should do nothing you can buy a portion share nowadays that was so not something you could do many years ago. 
Planet Musk says my Nikola puts her in the money. Well, you made a good decision there, Planet Musk. Obviously, I guess you were just pretty much you short everything against against Elon. Is that right? <laughs> Check out AYX. All right, I'll do that for you, Web. Let's have a look. So I still want to hang around here and have a look. I like this. Uh, I like this Bitcoin. AYX. Let's have a look. I'll whatever it is. Right on the SUP here. This particular stock. Let's go over the quick top down. Have a look what's been doing recently. So it's been very wild each way. Class action. Okay. So then we go down to the weekly and we have some crazy trade each way, which has been, I'm sure there's a more fundamental story you want to look about this. But what I saw straight away here was really this. We've got a low followed by another low, obviously an intervening peak here. We have a 200 and a 50. For me to even consider something like this, I want to see it up here. I want to see it break through this zone, come back down the old story, the conservative entry then at the 128. We'll have a 50, a 200, all acting as dynamic support. We will have broken through the previous peak and signaled buying potential. I like this, I like the trade setup here. If it happens, I don't know much about this stock, but I very much like that trade setup. If it happens, when they break these zones, it's very, very bullish. So that's my opinion on that thing right now. You can see it did it over here too. Very similar setup. Double bottom broke. There's the cons there's the conservative entry, bullish movement. Literally the exact same thing happened over here. Nice. Tesla going crazy again. Yeah, so we saw that movement up, of course, in the indices there. So we've got 3.13%. Amazon will not split. They like the superior stock price, Shane says. It's definitely possible. I, I don't think splits should inherently make money anymore. Beyond, now that's a stock that's on wild. It's like a Chipotle, yeah? Beyond meat. It's actually not as high as I thought it was. Because I mean the thing is when you this is this is a bit of accumulation here, but when you go to a monthly, you'll notice Beyond went crazy once. So Beyond came out of the gates like a psycho. <laughs> it was going crazy. It was 240, then it went all the way back down and then back up again. So this particular one. Now I'm not sure how good the competitive advantage of this particular meat type is, but yeah, this is uh accumulation through here. Let's go down to the daily. So we've got those 20 and the 50 sitting there. I've obviously got a coil going on here as well. Came back down, previous resistance, it's coiling out. 142 break above should be fairly explosive. We have not seen a close above there in a while. That would pretty much symbolize back into the 160, yeah? 142 break, that'd be pretty good. 142 break, comes back down again. Ideally, that's what we wanna see. 160 target, very clear target there. Very nice accumulation. Probably want to put volume on this chart as well. Check that out. Worthwhile checking out for sure. Uh, Jeremy, a BE. What's that thing? Bloom Energy. Another one of these energy companies. Megawatt deployment of fuel cell tech. So obviously it's one of these ones. This would be a TA only because I don't know much about the company. Again, you probably want to go to something like a monthly. So it hasn't been around long. That always kind of worries me in terms of those things, but that's why you need to understand more the fundamentals here. I think the fundamentals are the key approach to this particular to this particular stock just based on, of course, what's happened. We had the base formation at this 263, that's for sure. We've broken past as in a close on the monthly above here, which is good. Let's go down to the weekly, see what's happening. Bit of accumulation at the level. Now the weekly, oh, the body close almost didn't ever get above there. Again, we're testing these lows right now. I mean, this is technically buy zone territory for the long. This was a basically a double bottom and you still want it to complete. Ideally, this would be going up, but for it to go psycho, it has to close above 1740 gets above there could go back into the highs there's a lot of green i guess blue sky is what you want to call it on this stock so the gap fell here if it gets through this zone could be hyperactive 
if this stock gets hyped, gets through here, nice accumulation coming in, and then all of a sudden it gets, when it closes above, that's the hyperactivity. That's when it gets to that 35. Nice. So I like I like a break above this zone, mostly, because I'd be trading at like height. Julian says, I uh, Tesla is more than hype. I, I No, I don't disagree with you, Julian. There's a lot going on there. Absolutely. I just don't quite get which valuation I like it at. Look at copper, Javid says. Absolutely. Oh, this is the copper stock. <coughs> this is the copper stock. Nice. Is that right? I like copper. Oh, I don't have the copper chart up. You need to... Now, if you're on trading view, bit tip... If you want the copper chart, search copper trading view in Google and it will come up with like an Oanda feed or something for it. So you can just do this. And what you'll do is you'll bring up the chart and you can click on that and then you'll get the proper chart. I noticed that it's not on there for some unknown reason when you search it. They need to fix that. It's really annoying. I had a look at uh, AYX before web. Yeah, so here's the here's the copper chart. Oh, it's looking positive. Remember, copper is good. Copper is a great indicator for sentiment. Copper is going up right now. We've found that base at 295. We basically conservative tested it twice. I mean, that's very bullish for the S&P. Very bullish. Strong resistance at 330 for copper. I, yeah, I think, yeah, hopefully it's not the base is in yet, but certainly is bullish for the markets. I mean, that's what I was looking at last week in terms of dip buying. I can see why Wall Street were all over it if they were buying. Because if Wall Street were buying all here and copper was bullish and holding that level, that's a bullish indicator that I know a lot of people use. Siddharth says it's a chemical burger. Nikola is up 6% now. Okay, now I got you. Please check out SEA. <laughs> Jake, did you just test me? <laughs> SEC Limited. All right, man. I like the hustle. I like, I like the hustle. Yeah, you, you tricked me there. Very nice. That's a way of getting my attention. Say something outlandish and then get it. All right, are we even loading this right now? Whoa. Look at this beast. That is one very cool animal. Wow. Uh, that's a weekly chart too. Let's have a little monthly on that thing. Whew. Yep. That's definitely making a ton of money for somebody. Now, the question is, <laughs> do we like anything about it? Uh, all right. So... Uh, do we find a moving average that's at least hitting on the way up? God, it's not even hitting a normal moving average. So we'd have to be looking at probably maybe even going down time frames here. Haven't had a cross of a 2050 in a very long time, all the way since the breakout time. I don't even know if this thing's trading that technically. It's probably not. Like you basically usually want to have a moving average that's holding. So see see here, I've said this a few times. If you get a trade that's crazy vertical like this is, one touch of the 20, two touches of the 20, every 20 after that, you just buy that demon up, just buy it. Yeah. And then of course, eventually bust that, holds the level. When it breaks through the structure again, then you just keep buying it and hope that there's a new kind of moving average that shows you it. But the easiest way to follow a trend is to recognize a moving average and then buy those dips on it, especially after the one, two. So as I say always, the one, the two, and then you're good to go. You tick all those boxes. And we saw that on the, the NASDAQ. If you look at the NASDAQ, did the same thing. So copper still here doing quite strongly. Yeah, this particular stock though, I mean, it, you'd be on the smaller time frames looking at it. There's obviously not that much you can say TA about it. Sometimes there isn't probably more fundamentals still strong market here two percent coming into the 12 o'clock for me the first half an hour of trade new high formed on the s p on the futures here pretty strong please check out paypal yeah we can look at that hey dutch 
Tom, thanks again for your time. Good session as always, no worries. Thank you very much, Benny Molin, for subscribing. Appreciate that. Every subscriber, definitely appreciate it. Remember, we're giving away 500 bucks to a lucky subscriber just for being subscribed, potentially following us on the social as well. We'll do the draw, hopefully in a matter of weeks if we keep growing the way we are. And uh, we'll do that probably live and then we'll message you through YouTube and hopefully you respond. We'll give you probably 24 to 48 hours. And then if you don't, we'll have a few picked after that, just in case. Second chance draws. Thank you, Daniel Chi. I appreciate that. Thoughts on the Russell? Yeah, we haven't looked at the Russell or the Dow. Let's load up those two. So let's load up the old Dow over here and let's load up the Russell 2000. Let's check that out. Oh yeah, Russell 2000. All right. So we found a little bit more weakness here in the Russell. Let's go to the weekly. So the Russell is obviously the bottom 2000 kind of companies. Pretty much, I think it was. Was it Apple was bigger than all of them or something? <laughs> Market cap size it was pretty crazy. So here we've got the resistance becoming the support here. It didn't really fall as much as I'd hoped in terms of, you know, it was pretty strong really out of the gates. So the Russell's looking really bullish. The overall, the Dow over here has actually already done a little bit of nice structure this morning. Probably should have looked at this. So nice resistance becoming support going back into this zone. The Russell overall though is usually a good indicator of how healthy I guess the economy is. You usually wanna see these stocks doing well. And in this case, they're doing quite well. I actually expected this to be the weakest sector and it has been as in it hasn't made a new high, but overall the Fed money or whatever the hell is going on seems to be you know definitely supporting this market right now. Because this, this would be the one that you usually expect to short off heavily Overall, though, it makes sense to bounce right here. Previous resistance support, that's on the weekly. Jump down to the daily. Not as good patterns as you're seeing on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ and S&P have great patterns on them. Those double bottoms look really good on the NASDAQ and the S&P. We'll probably show everybody that again. A few people coming in that haven't been here before or weren't here before, so definitely want to go through that and show everybody. Dow already hit that previous resistance line with actually the support. Makes sense for it to bounce this zone. Wall Street's certainly buying all these dip zones. It makes sense. Like I had them on the charts. I mentioned them multiple times last week. I said those 50s look really good. I would still love to see the further level down to buy even more. <laughs> but at this point, this, this may be all we get. Copper's certainly saying that's all we get. Check out Amazon for a sec here. If it ever loads. Kevin says, entered a nice day trade from the Dow 15 minutes. Nice work, Kevin. Remember with indices or stocks, if you're generally always buying as well, a lot of people have a super bearish sentiment, which is totally fair. But at the same time, if you're always buying, they're inherently long devices. You have an advantage always going long. Percentage-wise, you'll be right more than not right. VIX below 26, says El Possum. Yep, well, with this kind of bullish movement, VIX is definitely going down. Remember, end of day is the key. We will check PayPal right now. We are seeing Amazon not that strong overall compared to some of the others. I'm sure we're seeing 2 or 3%, at least 2%, I'm sure, on Apple right now. So PayPal, obviously a story of the year. Very, very, very nice move for holders of this stock. Relatively very strong. Bit of a surprise case how strong it's been the last couple of years. So PayPal, really, I'd like to see it back at the 20. At this stage, we're sitting, what, 188.16. Are we in blow off? Are we in something else? Not probably. Overall, though, I think PayPal could fall along with like literally it could fall because of the move, even if the market doesn't. I still think it's a very overly bought stock right now. Here is the key level though, this 183 zone, previous resistance, act as support, act as support, very similar kind of pattern. If you go down to a four hour, you're gonna notice there's a lot of structure through here and we're still stuck between the 50 EMA and the 20 EMA. So it's pretty much like the market really right now. I'd probably rather the market than, than this at these levels. I'd feel a lot safer in the market. Can PayPal double for us? Mm, not sure. 
but I like some of the moves they're doing. But yeah, technically it makes sense to bounce here, stuck between these two moving averages. Anyone ever shopped on Alibaba in the room? Tell me right now, has anyone used Alibaba much? Do you use Alibaba much? Do you see this as a potential blow off for the indices uh, that just need to get up to the 61, 50 or 61.8 retracement before falling back? I don't because I don't think they crashed hard enough. Generally with a blow off, uh, Jeremiah, you usually see the market go heavy down. And I mean heavy, like yes, it was shorting, but it wasn't psycho shorting. Yeah, usually you see a lot more than that. Never, never, nope, never once, yes, sometimes. AliExpress is terrible. I agree. Yes, and AliExpress even more. Okay, Ollie likes it. I can't use that thing. So a few people do like it. All right. Yes, for Amazon FPA. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> for anyone that doesn't know what that is, that's a money-making thing that still surprisingly works. I, I used it a while ago. Financials, cruise lines, farmer, even up today. Well, obviously, it's the Monday that... Uh, Wall Street told everybody they bought last week, so they're hyping everyone up. Hey, Tom, how, uh, how important is the time of the day when entering a trade? If you're doing swing trading, does it matter like day trading does? Ah, good question. No, doesn't matter too much because you usually got bigger stops, you've got a bigger idea, and you're just waiting for a certain price. Sometimes it'll be 1 p.m. Sometimes it'll be... 11 in the morning. Sometimes it'll be open. Sometimes, you know, markets open incredibly negatively and then they go super bullish over the day. Now, in usual cases, like in Australia, our market will move slightly differently because we rely on the US to give us sentiment and therefore it has its own kind of way of doing things. But yeah, usually speaking, you'll be, uh, you'll be fine with swing. You can pretty much load the points instead. Loaded up 3X SP500 NASDAQ ETFs Thursday Oz time dip. What does this week look like for major indices? Technically, it looks good. So we're going to load up US100 and just talk about this one. Looks good right now. This is a nice move. So four hour is the key chart here. We'll draw this up one more time. Support down here at the 11,000 pretty much. Obviously, very, very clear to everybody now that that was clear support. We've tested it twice and found support, found buying pressure both times. We found buying pressure as well, more importantly, at the close of Friday, randomly. Uh, every other day, it had been selling off, but we found it. So Wall Street were nibbling all the way last week. Then we've got this 10.6 long point. We're stuck in the range here. We break high here. It's super bullish indicator, I think got through the 20 through the 200 as i said earlier in the stream that's a key point get through this point we're double bottoming basically low point one low point two intervening peak and then we go that range so we go basically a 600 point range long and that will push us back into this this 12 kind of two area but i like i like what we're seeing here right now obviously the confirmation's all about this point i would not be surprised ahead of fomc that we're here based on what we're seeing right now. But again, today's close will give us the sentiment for probably the next day into the FOMC. And it's all about that FOMC meeting. Thanks very much, James, for subscribing. Appreciate that. And a few other good questions coming in. All right, well, I think that we've probably seen what we're gonna see for today. Thank you very much for joining me for the last two hours for the stream. I appreciate each and every one of you. Appreciate the support recently. We do the Monday streams every week. We'll be doing all of it. We'll be doing a special election stream focusing on the markets. That is gonna be an amazing event. I think the election in the US is always a cool event. I've seen a few of them now and they're wild. So make sure to subscribe for that. And we'll also be doing most of the key news events through the US Times as well. And anything else that's interesting in the world that's interesting in finance. So yeah, thank you very much. Hopefully you'll learn something today. Remember confirmation is key. And of course, knowledge is empowering, but only if you use it. And that is the most important lesson of the day. All right. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the donations and everything. And we'll see you 
probably Wednesday or Wednesday, hopefully Wednesday. Thanks very much, Callum. Catch you, everybody.